So Boris, can you just um, recount what what your role was yesterday evening and uh, and what happened? I got asked by the race direction to <coughs> search a specific sector. Um, we got um, by email a zone that I could overlay on my chart so that I knew exactly where they wanted me to search with a 0 0.3 miles distance between my path one way and, and, and coming back the other way. So I, I started to, to go with the wind from the side um, in my sector from one end to the other. One path at, at the conditions and the speed was an hour. Um, so to have to, 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 to do my whole sector would have taken very, very long. But after one and a half or two hours, I, um, I saw the message that he, that Kevin has been found. And, uh, and that was, of course, um, the best moment uh, ever. <laughs> and I'm so happy that he got found. It's incredible. And what was going through your head when you were searching? What was your emotions? I was um, relatively um, composed and quiet, focused, very focused. Um, really, my eyes were searching the sea um, in the radius around the boat. Um, but of course, kind of a cinema goes through your head, like what is he doing at the moment? Where is he, uh, is he copying? Uh, is he still awake? Can you hear me if I call the VHF? Um, uh, things like that. And, uh, and knowing, realizing that it's, uh, we need so much luck tonight, I was praying a little bit while I was looking over the sea. There was a strong moon uh, lightening up the sea, so um, there was a certain chance to spot something, but between these big waves to spot a small life raft uh, is, is pure luck, and uh, luckily uh, then uh, his beacon in his pocket, I think, helped, and also the little light that John LeCam could spot on top of the life raft. Indeed. And what, what did it feel like afterwards? Did you take some time to recover and sleep, or what, what was your reaction afterwards? Yes, overnight I was lucky that the wind struck for a safe, easy constellation where the boat also was at a decent speed and not slamming. Uh, that gave me the chance to sleep uh, since the incident till the morning quite a bit. And uh, only now, sitting here in the morning and speaking to people, I realize what happens and, um, and, and I feel quite emotional about it. I see. But at the same time, you have a certain solidarity looking after each other and knowing that other sailors are close. Yes, of course, there's not a second hesitation. The, um, the safety of, of another sailor is much more important than the race. Um, we, I think all of us are happy and I was absolutely um, happy to abandon the race to to focus on uh, on finding Kevin and uh, that was the absolute priority I, I I cannot imagine what yeah I don't want to think about what could have happened and uh, and that has made um, the race kind of work. so now you're just going to take a little bit of time and get back into it slowly Yes, uh, then this morning I pulled out my dip top and um, trimmed the sails differently and uh, the wind also changed and I'm, I'm quite uh, going now the normal sail configuration and normal speed but um, uh, I, I don't feel, <laughs> feel completely ready yet to, to leave this behind. Um, it, 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 it was a shock for me. I mean, a, yeah, a big, a big fear. And um, yeah, it, it, it just uh, I just realized it this morning, really. And uh, so the boat the boat is going at normal race speeds, but um, <laughs> I still need a bit of time to to get back to to the race in my head.